You're listening to This Is My Side Hustle, the tips, tools, and advice you need to optimize your life live here. If you're looking to unlock the secrets to additional income by engineering your choices around your ideal lifestyle, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and join us as we unpack unconventional ideas and methods to give you more freedom and flexibility. Let's escape the rat race together and live with intention. Let's learn how others are making it pay with their side hustles. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 30 of This Is My Side Hustle. Today, I'm going to be talking about my favorite tools for freelancer, just like I promised in episode 29, and this is going to be the last of my freelancer series, so I'm going to talk about some of the tools, and then I'm going to go over some qualities that you should probably consider um, in yourself before you jump into freelancing, and... Then next episode, I decided, which is going to come out on Christmas Day, is going to be about some year-end tax-saving tips. So some things you can do to save on taxes before the end of the year. Um, So I do want to encourage you to subscribe so that you get a notification and a download on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. I mean, (laughs) I always forget that they changed the name, or wherever else that you listen to podcasts, your favorite podcatcher app. Um, That way you can put them into effect right away after Christmas because you only have until the end of the year. But before I get started, I just wanted to say I hope you all had a lovely Thanksgiving um, and that you were healthy and happy. And our plans kind of changed last minute. We were supposed to go to an extended family member's home and she was sick. So she said, sorry guys, we can't host, you know, we don't want to get anyone sick. So we decided my, well, my kids and my husband kind of decided for me that they still wanted Thanksgiving dinner because I mean, who doesn't like turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing and all of that? And I had to agree. I mean, I, that's probably one of my favorite meals of all time. So I said, okay, well, we'll we'll just do it here. Just us, just us four. It's the first time in my life that I've had Thanksgiving dinner just with immediate family. Even I think when I was growing up, I don't think our family ever just had our immediate family. We always went to grandmother's houses or aunts or uncles or wherever. Um, and so this was a a new thing for me (laughs) and I'm not really known to be an avid cook. I do cook. Um, and I'm pretty decent if I, if I say so myself, but I just don't really like it. So I was kind of like, okay. So what I ended up doing is, um, I had a lot going on and it was kind of you know, the couple of days before Thanksgiving when this was announcement was made and we kind of made the decision to go ahead and do it at home. So I ordered everything I needed from Aldi via Instacart. So I love Instacart. Um, if you go to making it pay to stay.com slash Instacart, I think you'll get, if you sign up and you haven't before, I think you'll get like 10 or $15 if you use my link. Um, so I'll put that in the show notes, but I absolutely love it. I'm constantly getting emails with coupons like you have $20 worth of free groceries and, you know, coupon codes that I can apply. Um, it's so nice to not have to go out, especially in cold weather or in winter. Um, we haven't had too much bad weather here yet, but I'm anticipating it to be like that in the future. And I like knowing that I'm supporting other side hustlers at the same time. So it's a win-win all around. You know, somebody has a side hustle working with Instacart. Uh, They're making extra money. I don't have to go out. I absolutely despise grocery shopping. It is my most dreaded task that I have to do every week other than probably cleaning my house. And I still have not outsourced that mainly because I'm... um, I wouldn't say I'm like super particular, but I really don't like the idea of somebody else in my house with me 
while I'm doing things and they're cleaning. Like it almost makes me feel weird. And I wouldn't want to just leave for no reason because I work from home and have them clean my house. And then I just wait around or go do shopping because I don't like shopping either. I don't like shopping in stores. Online shopping is fine for me, (laughs) but I love Instacart. Anyway, so I ordered everything I needed. The guy brought it, you know, an hour later and I tried to figure out quickly what I could make ahead and I made it that day. So I made um, pumpkin pie ahead of time and biscuits ahead of time. And then uh, that morning I really didn't get started until two hours before we had to eat. Now granted, I only got a turkey breast instead of a whole turkey because it was just our immediate family. But everything else I was able to whip up within two hours. It was actually incredibly easy to cook for four people an entire Thanksgiving meal. I mean, we had all the sides, the pumpkin pie, everything. Um, And it was really good. And it was really not stressful because we all just wore our regular comfy clothes. Nobody felt like they had to get dressed up or, you know... I wasn't worried about making a meal and keeping it warm until I got to wherever we needed to go. When we were done, we just cleaned up and then we just lazed around. It was really, really nice. Um, So if you've never done that before, I highly suggest it. Um, Some people may have done that their whole lives. Maybe you're listening and you're single and you're alone and you really enjoy getting together with a lot of people. And normally, you know, on holidays, that's what we do. But having a little bit of a change of pace was really nice for once. So anyway, um, I just wanted to give you like a little recap of that. And I guess I should go ahead and jump into this. Um, I've got a lot going on between now and Christmas. So I'm actually batch recording this episode. And then I'm going to record episode 31, which will come out on Christmas Day, like I said, about the year-end tax tips. And I'm going to try to get as much as I can done ahead of time for work so that the entire week of Christmas I can either take off or barely do anything. And that's, that's kind of my plan. Uh, I, my clients like that too. You know, they're busy. They want to spend time with family or they're traveling or whatever. And we all kind of get together every year around the entire week of Christmas and say, okay, let's try to like get things done ahead of time so we can just take off. And that's the nice thing when you work for yourself. You can kind of plan ahead with your clients when you're going to take off. You don't have to go to somebody and put in a request or plan it a ton of time in advance. You can just say, hey, you know, this week I'm planning on not doing much or anything. Um, So let's go over what we need to get done ahead of time, get everything scheduled, get everything ready, and then we can all just relax and enjoy the holidays. So that is another great thing about either being your own boss or working online or being a freelancer. You really can have a lot more control over when you do things. And that's just one of many of the reasons I love doing what I do. All right, so let's get started. I want to talk about freelancing tools. So, I mean, like I just said, the average workday of every freelancer is busy and dynamic due to many projects and clients that need attended to. So you've got, you've got to finish the projects that you've already got going on. You've got to pitch to new clients, which we talked about in episode 29 about marketing yourself um, and getting and keeping clients. You gotta send invoices to clients, you have to set up meeting with new ones, and all kinds of your regular everyday work. So if you're a freelancer, you really can't be efficient and deliver quality service if you have to do all these things simultaneously without assistance of any kind. You've got a lot of balls in the air all at once. That's why I wanted to go over some of these tools to help ease your workload and enhance your productivity. I'm all about that. These tools are going to help you effectively manage your time and energy and increase the quality of the work you do. So, you know, money is a renewable resource. Time is not. You can always make more money, but you can never get back more time. So if you can effectively manage your time, then you're going to be making more money in a shorter amount of time, and you're also not going to be burning out. So it's really important to... Equip yourself with tools, and a lot of these tools I'm going to talk about are absolutely free. Some of them are 
uh, free or tiered with different payment plans and payment options um, depending on what you need, but I definitely wanted to go over all of these. So the first one I'm going to talk about, the first category of tools I want to discuss is calendar tools. So time is of the essence in freelancing. And for you to make maximum use of every single day, you need a tool to help you plan your days. So keeping tabs on deadlines and appointments is really, really important. Calendar tools will help you create a schedule that you can stick to. So the one I use is Google Calendar. Now you can use Google Calendar even if you have a free Gmail account. I use G Suite. Um, and with G Suite, I can access not only my calendar, but it syncs to my Trello account and my Google Drive and all of that. But you do not need to pay for a G Suite account to use Google Calendar. There's an app for your phone. It connects to your email. I love it because a lot of times um, if you sign up for something or if you make a reservation or anything like that, there's usually an option to add to your Google Calendar. And what it does is it just enables you to set reminders for upcoming deadlines and appointments, as well as details and locations of meetings or appointments. So you can create Google Calendar events, which you can also share with your clients. So this is another thing that I love about Google Calendar is that if I have one for my business account, I can invite my various clients and share different things with them that we need to be on top of. So let's say um, I need to remind a client that we have a weekly touch base call. I can just add her to that and then she it gets, gets on her Google Calendar and she's reminded of it also. And then if she needs to change it, she can and then I'm notified. I also use it for my personal email. Um, I actually usually use my business Google Calendar account, but it also syncs with my personal one. So let's say I book a hotel for a personal thing, such as a gymnastics meet that my daughter has. Well, my business one will also sync up with that one. So no matter what Google Chrome profile I'm signed into, I can see everything that's going on all at once. It's really cool too because you can set frequencies so every time I have to remember to send an invoice to a client, if they're not on an automatic invoice system, I get regular notifications, let's say every two weeks for that. Um, so I have my daughter's gymnastics schedule on there and I get, I can set up their whole entire gymnastics schedule for the entire year and then it repeats on those days automatically. So I don't have to go in every single week and add it. You can also adjust the notifications you get if you also get an email to remind you. So it's just really, really cool and it's completely free if you have a free um, Google account or if you have G Suite, it's included. So the next calendar tool I like is called Calendly and that's C I. Ugh. let me start again. C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. This tool has automatic time zone detection that will allow you to schedule meetings and deadlines with clients who are from other countries or other time zones. You can find a convenient meeting time for you and the client using this app. One-on-one -on -one meetings can also be scheduled. Now I like this because I have clients in Canada. Uh, actually, I have two clients in Canada in different time zones. I've got other clients in different time zones. And so especially when, you know, it's right around daylight savings time or the, the time zones are um, tricky to keep up with or you've got a lot of them going on or if, if you have clients that are um, on the other side of the globe, this is really important because it ensures that no one's going to forget or miss something. All right, the next kind of tool that you need to have is a proposal tool. Now, this isn't 100% necessary if you have already have a proposal template that you use. In fact, in the Making It Pay Lifestyle course, I include my own proposal template that you can customize yourself. It's basically the exact wording, um, the document that I use that you can customize yourself. That's what I use right now. However, I'm considering going to one of these other ones because they have a lot more features. And I also think a few of my clients who are consultants could use these as well. 
Um, you really, it really pays to have something that's going to help you write a good proposal. When you're pitching a client, that's the first impression they're going to get from you. So if you don't feel comfortable using a template or you don't feel comfortable you doing something on your own, check out these two I'm about to tell you about. The first one is called Proposify. You can create beautiful proposals within a short while while using this tool. It has a whole library of pre-designed templates that you can use and you can add videos and images to make it more engaging. This tool enables you to know how long a client looked at your proposal too, which is kind of cool. Every proposal design on this tool is mobile friendly as well, which is important. And I really love the feature that lets you know how long they looked at it. If you know that somebody looked at your proposal for five seconds and then moved on, well, something's wrong. They, you either didn't catch their attention or they were distracted or something like that. If you know that they were looking at it for a good five to 10 minutes, then you know that you maybe have a chance and you definitely should be following up with them rather quickly because you grab their attention. The next one is called Prospero. And this is for new freelancers that are not really familiar yet with the rates in their niche. The good news is though that Prospero will help you create proposals and price out every project, which a lot of freelancers struggle with, especially if you're just getting started. If you're not sure what to charge or how long it's going to take you, this tool will help you with that. When you're creating the proposal with Prospero, the tool will ask you how long it will take you to complete the project, the type of work it is, and how much you want to be paid. This enables it to create a proposal with pricing that suits you. So it really helps out if you are um, new to it, if you're unsure, or if you just feel a bit insecure about maybe charging too much, this will help you out. The next category of tools are time tracking tools, and I love time tracking tools. So many freelancers just don't know how to manage their time appropriately. I mean, especially if you're working from home and you've never done that before, it's really tempting to just sit around and watch TV or fold some laundry when you're supposed to be working. Believe me, I get that. Um, I've done it long enough, no though, to know that I like to really focus on my work, get it out of the way, and then do all of the stuff around the house and have my own personal time to myself without constantly feeling like my brain is being torn in two different directions. Time tracking tools will help you appropriately allocate time to each project and keep track of which project consumes more time. So the first one I want to talk about is Toggle. Um, it's completely free. I use it. I love it. You can assign different clients, different folders, different projects to it. I use Toggle for not only tracking my time that I then tell my clients how long things are taking me. Some of my clients ask for this, some of them don't. The reason the ones that ask for it do that is usually because they're an agency as well and they need to know if they're charging the appropriate price to the clients that I'm working on. So it's not like they're keeping tabs on me and questioning me whether I'm actually taking that much time or not. It's more that they can get a feel for, okay, over a three month period of time, Sherry spent this amount of time on this client. So I, you know, I need to be charging this much in the future for similar type packages. Um, most of my clients don't require it, but I track my time with all my clients anyway, because I like to see as time goes on that my productivity goes up and I get paid more per hour because I'm getting faster and better. Another one you can use is called Harvest. Uh, this is one of the best tracking tools. It can work with project management tools such as QuickBooks, Trello, and Asana. Invoices can also be sent through this app to clients. So it's got all kinds of cool different features. You can try it for free. It does, uh, they do have paid plans after that, but that's, you know, that's to be expected considering all of the different features it has. The next one is Rescue Time. Rescue Time is cool because you can monitor your screen activity and how much time you spend on a website using this tool. Reports are generated based on what has been monitored, and these reports help analyze, analyze patterns of usage 
as well as rectifying mistakes. So it basically helps you get better workplace life balance. It tells you uh, what your habits are when you're online so that you can maybe see areas where you're spending way too much time on social media when, let's say, social media isn't required for your job. And uh, when you have that information, you can then take steps to change it. Hub staff is another one that's good if you have other people working with you on a project. This tool helps track the online activities of your team members. Screenshot of the online activities of every member of the team is taken. This will enable you to know who is working and who is not. Invoices can also be issued and payments received within Hub staff. Um, and I will be sure to link to all of these in the show notes. So if you're not writing it down or if you're driving right now, don't worry. Just go to the show notes um, and all of these tools I'm listing right now will be linked to so you can check them out for yourself. Okay, the next time tool is called Stay Focused. Stay Focused, ugh, stay focused limits the time you spend on time-wasting websites. So if you have difficulty disciplining yourself to stay away from irrelevant online activities like Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, you should definitely have this tool. And the final one I wanted to mention is called there.pm. As a freelancer, you're most likely going to communicate with people all over the world. So even if your clients aren't over, all over the world, you might be working with other freelancers with your clients who are. And you need to keep track of the time zone of each client. So this actually enables you to track the time zone of every client just at a glance. So this isn't necessarily a meeting scheduling tool or anything like that. It's not like Calendly, but you can just click at the top of your screen on your computer. It pulls down this drop down box of all of the different team members and gives you their current time. So that's really cool. Um, if you are a freelancer and you decide to branch out and start hiring other people to work with you, that's very helpful as well. Okay, moving on. Cloud storage tools. Storing, accessing, sharing files, and collaborating in real time are all necessary for freelancing, and you can only achieve that using cloud storage tools. These tools also create backup storage for all of your important documents and projects. With cloud storage tools, you don't need to worry about losing your work due to a virus attack or sudden crash of your computer. All works are automatically saved as you are working. Now, the first one I want to recommend is Google Drive. I use this all the time. It's free with Google Suite. It's free with a, well, it's included with Google Suite. It's free with a uh, free Gmail account up to a certain limit of storage. This software gives you access to their other Google software tools, such as Slides, Docs, and Sheets. So you don't have to have Microsoft Office if you have Google Drive. You can work online and collaborate with your team members in real time. The files are all stored in your drive. You do have a limited storage space with the free account of only 15 gigabytes. However, you can always purchase more. Um, and I have, I, I pay for more every month and it's as much as I've ever needed. And I think it's two or three dollars a month. So it's really inexpensive if you do need more than that. The next one is Dropbox. I also use Dropbox. This cloud-based storage software enables you to share files and projects with clients. When you install Dropbox on your computer, all your online files will be synced to your computer, and every project you work on will be backed up to the cloud. The storage space for you know the basic account is limited, but you can purchase extra space. So I have the plan that is $120 a month or so, I mean, not a month, I'm sorry, a year. So it's about $10 a month, but I literally have gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of um, stuff in my Dropbox, so I need it. I have videos in there and, and photos and stuff I need to keep for my clients for years. So I did spring for a paid plan. The last one is called Spin Backup. 
This tool can be used to back up redundant files on Google products such as Gmail. It protects Google users from account hijacking when the original account has been compromised. With this tool, you won't lose important emails, documents, and pictures to cyber criminals. Whenever you make changes to the files, the changes are automatically saved. So it's really cool. It does cloud storage. It also protects you from different things. It's got backup, recovery. Um, it's pretty neat, and you can try it for free. The next category of tools I want to discuss are writing tools. Content marketing is a highly sought after skill in freelancing. Only good quality content ranks high in the result pages of search engines. There are tools available that will assist you to write quality content that is free of grammatical errors. The first one is called Hemingway. This tool helps to check the grammar of written content. It lets you know whether content is too advanced for the general online audience to comprehend. So you really want to actually write to someone who's in about fifth or sixth grade. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but <laughs> when something is too hard to read or too wordy, um, Google actually penalizes you for that. So Hemingway is great for that. It'll tell you what grade level of readability your article or your piece of writing is set at. And it also proofreads your contact, content and identifies complex sentences that need to be simplified, speech that needs to be changed from active to passive voice, and other grammatical errors that you may not notice if you're just proofreading on your own. Grammarly is one of the best grammar checking tools. It's not only just useful to content writers, but literally all freelancers. If you want to send articulate proposals to your client, you will need to run the proposal through Grammarly. It fixes grammatical errors like wrong spelling, punctuation, modifier placement, and subject verb agreement. It also has a plagiarism check tool that will help you avoid plagiarizing other people's content. It's really great. Uh, I got the Grammarly Chrome extension, and every time I write a blog post or basically anything else, an email or anything on Google Docs, Grammarly tells me if I've misspelled something or if I've got a grammatical error anywhere. It's really awesome. And the next tool for content writers or if you have a blog or anything like that, even a website, is Yoast SEO. This WordPress plugin allows you to implement on-site SEO practices on every post you make. It helps you know if you're using a keyword correctly. It also helps you to generate XML site maps for your website, which is important for SEO. KW Finder is for SEO content writers, and it helps you find the right keywords. Finding the right keywords when you're writing a blog post or anything on your website is crucial. This software helps you go find the right keywords that will help you rank in different search engines and locations. Evernote. Your mind is not capable of storing every detail of your job. Evernote helps you note down your work to-do list. You can also organize your notes into notebooks and add tags to them for easy identification. With this tool, you can take notes on the go. They have mobile apps. You can copy and paste practically anything from anywhere and then add a tag or two. And then when you need to go back to a project or something you're writing, you can just open up Evernote and it's all stored right there. The next category is finance tools. As a freelancer, you are in charge of your finances. The managing of your budget, paying of taxes, and receiving payment from clients is all up to you. Check out these tools that will help you in handle every aspect of your business. The first one is PayPal. This is the most convenient way to get paid as a freelancer. PayPal supports 25 currencies and is available in over 200 countries. This makes it an ideal choice of payment for receiving, or an ideal choice of, um, an, ideal, blah, 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 an ideal payment system for receiving payment <laughs> from your clients all over the world. It's the most acceptable form of payment for most online transactions. 
You will pay a 3% fee though when you use PayPal. So to be, be sure to include that when sending proposals to your client or just build it into your pricing really. I mean, don't charge them extra for that. Just build it into your pricing. The next one is called Mint. This app is used for budgeting. All of your financial accounts are gathered together in one dashboard. Therefore, the, I cannot talk today. Thereby making it easy for you to track your budget, bills, and investments. Mint will help you keep accurate track of your finances, and it's completely free. They also let you check your credit score. In fact, they'll send you every month your credit score and... Um, if you notice then something is off or if it drops suddenly, you can get your credit reports, make sure nothing happened, make sure fraud didn't happen, or maybe change your habits in the future. <laughs> maybe you opened a new line of credit when you shouldn't have yet, but it's pretty cool. Definitely check out Mint. And the last thing is FreshBooks. FreshBooks is accounting software that can be linked with your bank accounts making it easy for you to track your income and expenses. You can send invoices, you can make payments with it, uh, you can check if an invoice has been viewed. It's really cool. They'll send automatic payment reminders. There's a lot of things you can do with FreshBook. It is the number one rated uh, invoicing system for freelancers by far. So that's pretty much it, guys, as far as tools. I did want to kind of go over um, some characteristics of successful freelancers just to kind of wrap up this whole series I've been talking about, about freelancing. Um, you know, success in freelancing doesn't happen for all. There are a lot of people who quit their job for freelancing, and after many years, they still haven't succeeded. Others have gotten tremendous, tremendous success, and they become a force to be reckoned with within their industry. Despite functioning in different niches, successful freelancers have some things in common. If you want to succeed at freelancing, you need to embrace the characteristics that most successful freelancers have. So let's take a look at some of those. The first one is hard work. Um, it's not easy to be a freelancer. Yes, you can use tools um, to make things easier. Yes, as you learn more and you become more comfortable after you've done it for a few years, it becomes less daunting, but you still have to put in the work. It is hard work. Number two is self-discipline and professionalism. In order to work from home or be a freelancer, you really have to be self-disciplined. If you feel like you have no self-discipline in any area of your life, freelancing is probably not for you. And professionalism, you need to know how to be professional. You can't show up to a video conference call pitching a new client in your sweats. That's totally fine if you want to wear sweats or your PJs all day long when you're working, but you need to be aware of your appearance. Make sure that your online profiles are professional, that your website is professional, and when you're conversing with your clients, whether on email, text, or video, that you're professional about it. The next one is excellent communication skills. Every relationship thrives on good communication. Successful freelancers constantly communicate with their clients and target audience. So you need to over communicate, over communicate, over communicate. Never leave anybody hanging and wondering where you are in a project or when it's going to be done. If, you know, if something comes up, you need to let them know, get back to their emails quickly. Even if you aren't able to do the work right away, at least tell them when it will be done. Next is flexibility. You really need to be flexible as a freelancer. A lot of times this can be good for some people. If you've got the self-discipline, the great news is you can be flexible and choose when you want to work. But sometimes things happen. Uh, life gets in the way or a client needs something last minute. You need to be flexible with that. The cool thing is, though, if you're working from home, that makes it a lot easier. You also need to be goal-oriented. Studies have shown that 14% of people who set goals for their business are 10 times more successful than those without goals. Every successful freelancer is a goal setter and a go-getter. They set goals and targets for the week, month, and year. The goals are centered on how to grow in the industry, the number of clients they want to have, 
how, how much they should earn within a period, and even goals on personal development. So if, you're, if you feel like you struggle with setting goals, you know, look up how to set good goals. Um, even if you type in goals in makingitpaytostay.com in the search bar, I've got several articles on how to go about setting goals that hopefully will give you some inspiration. And time management. Freelancers have identified flexible time schedules as one of the things they love most about freelancing. But despite having a flexible time schedule, it's important to know how to manage time. Clients always have deadlines, and if you're not ruthless about time management, you won't succeed. Missing a deadline can make you lose a client and cost you a lot of money because a client may reject the work once the deadline has elapsed. The next thing you, the next quality you need to have as a freelancer is resilience. People who give up easily don't fare well in freelancing. Positivity, optimism, and persistence are all required to succeed as a freelancer. There are a lot of challenges and difficulties that freelancers constantly have to deal with, especially in the early stages. To get clients and deliver value, you have to be persistent. Successful freelancers don't get easily discouraged when things don't go their way. When they try a method and it doesn't work, they look for a better alternative. They're also resourceful. Resilience is required at the start of your career as it will as it won't be hard to get clients and reach your financial target if you keep on persisting. One way to ensure that you don't give up easily is to remain motivated. Go through success stories of other freelancers who were faced with similar challenges as yours and make up your mind to be successful too. So hopefully some of these tips have helped. Hopefully this whole series on freelancing has been inspiring to you. You found some new tools, you found some new tips, you've um, got some things to think about. I would love to hear from you if you are a freelancer and any of this has helped, or if you want to be on the show, I would love that as well. You can be on the show by going to makingitpaytostay.com slash voicemail, or you can leave me comments and tips there. You can follow me on Instagram at makingitpaylifestyle. Or feel free to send me an email, sherry at makingitpaylifestyle.com. And please subscribe, rate, review, share this with your friends. The more people who hear it, the better. I just want to get the information out there. And I hope you all have a wonderful and somewhat peaceful couple of weeks leading up to Christmas. And I will talk to you next time. And until next time, this is my side hustle.